So in problem F4-14, this is from the book, we are asked to determine the magnitude of the moment of this force F along the OA axis. In other words, along an axis that starts at my origin and moves towards my point A. So as you can see, this is neither the X, the Y, nor the Z axis. It is not an axis in the direction of the force. It is not even an axis in the direction of the position vector for this moment. This is actually an axis that is on the X, Y plane, but it is neither X nor Y. So this is an interesting problem because it's giving us, or it's asking us, to calculate the component that the, of the moment that this force causes, but only about this, uns, this specified axis. So we're gonna look at this problem. If you have your book, I recommend that you follow along with your book. Uh, I'm not really gonna try to draw this, this one. But essentially, uh, what we're having here is we are given a force of 300i minus 200j plus 150k uh, newtons. And we are asked to find the moment component along the OA axis. Now, first off, if we want to find this moment component, right, I would start by first figuring out what the moment is. In other words, I would like to start this problem by first trying to figure out what is my moment. And after I know what my moment is, then I would like to figure out what is the component along this OA axis, okay? Now, if you already read the notes or if you've already read the chapter, you'll know there's a faster way to solve it, but I, I wanna solve it um, step by step first without skipping any steps. And after we do it, then we'll see how we can skip some steps and get the answer faster. So what do we have? We have, first, we need to find our uh, moment component, okay? How do you think we can find that moment component? Any, any ideas? We could start, right, by finding out what, uh, what the total moment is. But are there any general ideas on how we could begin to find this, uh, this uh, moment? Uh, do you find a position vector? Okay, that's right. Remember that when we are looking at moments in three dimensions, the moment will be equal to the cross product of a position vector, right, times my force. So because of that, we need to find a position vector first. Now, when we're looking at a problem such as this one, Here's why I think we need to be, uh, I, I would say, a, a little careful. Because our position vector essentially needs to connect, right, from the line where we are trying to calculate our moment to where that force is. And things can get a little, I will say, uh, complicated, uh, to say at least here. However, let's just look back at our figure. Let me pull, pull it up if you don't have the book with you. And let's see if we can figure out how to find the position vector for this moment, for this uh, moment example. So first off, from where to where does this position vector have to act? From O to A. Okay. So you're saying that position vector has to act from O to A. So would you mind explaining to me why? Well, if we're trying to find the moment about O A, we could just find the, the cross product of position vector O A and the force, right? Okay. So we could do that. Um, however, let's remember one key thing. Moment is R cross F, but R is always the distance between the point of rotation, right, 
to your force. So here's where things get complicated, right? The position vector OA doesn't actually intersect with the force, right? So it's not really giving me a distance between something and the force. It's just giving me a line about an axis that I want. But the position vector R always needs to land at where the force is acting. on. So whatever our position vector is, it will need to coincide with point B, okay? So I just wanted to make that uh, a little bit clear. The position vector will have to coincide with point B. So I can completely understand why we would think the position vector is from, from O to A, because it's a very, very easy mistake to make. But let's keep in mind that this position vector always, always, right, has to point towards the force. So let me just write down a note here. The position vector always points toward the force. Okay? So keeping this in mind, right? Keep, keeping in mind that the position vector always points toward the force, what do you think would be a good position vector to find? And there's actually more than one right answer here, so don't worry if it's not the one that we end up using. Let me show the image again, the figure again. I don't know why I keep switching or closing my book if I know I have to go back to, to the figure. So remember, position vector always points towards the force. So in this case, you don't even have to give me the starting point. What do you think is the ending point of the position vector? Any ideas? Will be uh, B. Exactly. So that's, that's one key thing to keep in mind. Your position vector will always end at the point where the force acts on. And that's correct. The position vector would essentially point towards my point B. Now here is where we can be, we can do a little bit of a, what do you call it? We can be a little bit creative, I would say. And I, I, I say that we can be creative because as long as my position vector ends towards B, I can pick a variety of different starting points and it still land at the right answer. But what I'm gonna to recommend to you is that you always pick right the easiest starting point, which is the one that is the most close to being perpendicular to your line of action of the force. So in this case, right, I have a position vector that ends at B. I could easily choose my vector from the origin to B, or if I'm feeling a little bit lazy, let me go back to the figure. If I'm feeling a little bit lazy, instead of choosing a position vector from O to B, I could also pick a position vector from A to B. Now, why is that? A, right, is going to start at the line where we are trying to find the component, which is okay, and ends at the point where the force acts on, which is necessary. So more than okay, it has to end at this point and that's what makes it necessary, okay? I could also do O to B, but because my vector AB is easier to find, I'm just gonna try to use a position vector from A to B. Now, I guess from looking at the figure, I would say don't even try to to, to calculate it. Just looking at this figure, can anybody give me the position vector from A to B? Remember, position vector is simply coordinates at the end point minus coordinates at the start point. The negative 0.2k? Yep, that's it. We have 0i plus 0j plus negative 0.2k. And why do you think the i's and j's are zero? Because at both coordinates A and B, my X and Y coordinates don't change. The only thing that changes is my Z coordinate. So my position vector is going to be negative 0 0.2 K meters, okay? Now, 
I'd like to say we've actually gotten through the hardest part of this problem because the hardest part of this problem is figuring out where my position vector will be, okay? So as long as I can remember that the position vector always points towards the force, we should be able to come up with a good position vector in this case, negative 0.2k is actually a good choice for my position vector, okay? So now, right? Now, what is the moment? We can see that the moment, in this case, it will be the moment, if the position vector is from A to B, it will be the moment about point A, is simply equal to the cross product of my position vector and my force vector. Now, we don't really need to go over cross product again. So I'm just going to write down the big determinant here, and I'll leave it to you to solve it. So remember, we have our determinant i, j, and k vectors. We have our position vector components first. So what are my position vector components? We obviously know that k is negative 0.2, but what would i and j be? Just zero, right? Yep, both of them just zeros. And that's why, like I mentioned, that's why I always um, try to mention that we always want to pick the easiest position vector to use. I think this would be the easiest position vector to use. And then we have our force components, which are 300, negative 200, and positive 150. So we can solve this determinant by saying i times 0 minus negative 0.2 times negative 200 that I'm assuming that is negative 40 I is that correct I could be wrong but is that correct that's right okay so minus we have j times 0 minus negative 0.2 times 300 that would be 60, but remember it's minus and negative, right? That's a positive, but we have a negative sign here, so it's still a negative. So minus 60j. And then we have plus, we have k times 0, minus 0, so plus 0. And of course, Never forget, the units of moment will be the units of the position vector, which are meters, times the force vector, which are Newton. So we have our moment of negative 40i minus 60j plus 0k Newton's meters. And that is the moment. But that's not what they ask us, right? They're not asking us for the moment about point A, right? That, that, that is not what they're asking us. Instead, we are being asked for the moment about line or the axis from O to A. So here is where we go back to our force equations. We see that the component of this moment is equal to the dot product of the moment vector times my unit vector along that direction. So I would say that the first step is for me to find that unit vector. So in order to find a unit vector along my point OA, I may need to go back to my figure. And what do you think I can do to find a unit vector along this direction? You could find the position vector and then divide it by its magnitude. Exactly. We can always find a unit vector by taking a position vector and dividing it by its magnitude. So um, position vector, I'm just going to go quick. We just have the coordinates of A, which are 0.3, x, 0.4, y, and 0, z, minus the coordinates of O. And O is at the origin, so its coordinates are going to be 0, 0, 0. And that's actually good for us because it makes our position vector uh, pretty easy to find, OK? so. Let's write down the position vector, okay, the position vector for my axis OA. So we get position vector for axis OA. We have 0.3 in the x direction. 
And once again, I close my figure. So we have 0.3 in the x direction and 0.4 in the y direction. And we have nothing in the k direction. So I'm, I'm not even going to write it. And these are meters divided by its magnitude. Now, I, I shouldn't have to remind you, but I will anyway. Remember the magnitude of a vector can be found by applying the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, the magnitude of my vector is 0.3 squared plus 0.4 squared. And take the square root of that. Notice that units cancel out. And I get a unit vector along axis OA of 0.3 over this magnitude. So does anybody have a calculator and can calculate 0.3 squared plus 0.4 squared and then take the square root of that? 0 0.5. Thank you. So we get 0 0.3 over 0 0.5i plus 0 0.4 over 0 0.5j. And 0 0.3 over 0 0.5 is just 0 0.6i. And 0 0.4 over 0 0.5 is 0 0.8j. And that's our unit vector. So then we move to our final step or one of our final steps. If we want to find the magnitude of this component, we just take the dot product of your moment and your unit vector. In this case, my component of the moment along axis O, A, I'm just gonna rewrite this here, will be equal to the dot product of my moment vector and the unit vector along my axis of interest. Now remember for the dot product, the dot part is equal to AB cosine theta, but we don't really need the angle because what we can also do is we can multiply the X, the Y, and the Z components and then add them up. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take the X components plus the Y components plus the Z components. And I get that my X component, we have negative 40 times 0.6 plus my y component, I have negative 60 times 0.8. And in my z components, I have zero and zero. And now I can find that component of my moment about axis OA. I have negative 40 times 0.6. Is that uh, negative 24? That's correct. Thank you. And then I have negative 60 times 0.8. I'm assuming it would be negative 48. That's correct. So we have negative 24 plus negative 48, uh, 72, I think. Yeah. So I have negative 72. And of course, never forget our units. The unit vector is dimensionless, but the moment vector we already know is Newton's times meters. Now what does this negative mean? This negative means that the moment will be clockwise about the axis OA. So we have our components. Our final step, which this isn't really what the problem asks us to, the problem only asks us for the component, but our final step would be to express this moment in vector form. And if I want to express this moment in vector form, all I have to do is take my magnitude of the moment and multiply it by the unit vector about which I want to find. In this case, we would have negative 72, that's a magnitude of minus 72, multiplied by my unit vector, which is 0.6 plus 0.8. Plus okay. And you're going to find an, uh, I would say, an interesting result once you uh, apply this. But I'm going to let you solve it yourself. And then when you figure out what the interesting result is, then let me know what you think of it. But anyway, this is how we would solve the problem if we actually want to consider every single step, right? So we find the moment by taking the cross product 
then we find the unit vector and then we take the dot product of this moment times the unit vector in order to land at that component. However, there is an easier way to do this. Now, we may uh, want to look a little bit or review our vector operations a bit, but I am just going to look at dimensionless or sorry, numberless variables. So when I say, right, when I, when I tell you that I would like to find the moment about a specified axis, and when I'm asking you to multiply or to take the dot product of your moment vector and a unit vector, essentially, this is what I'm asking you to do. I'm saying that the component, in this case, it was OA, was simply equal to the dot product of your moment vector and your unit vector. But, and here's a, an interesting but, our moment is actually equal to your position vector and your force vector. So what this gives me is the dot product of a cross product. And this function actually has a name in vector operations. This is what we call the scalar triple product. The scalar triple product is defined as the dot product of a cross product. And it's an interesting operation. Because first, we know that dot products are commutative. And if dot products are commutative, I can actually rearrange these terms and write my unit vector dot my cross product. And if I wanted to figure out what this, uh, what all of this means, I'm just going to define my unit vector as an x component, a y component, and a Z component. I'm going to get define my position vector as having an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. And I'm going to give my force vector an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. And why am I doing this? Because now I would like for us to find out what this dot product of a cross product can be reduced to. So I'm going to start first by finding the cross product, R cross F. We know that it will be equal to the determinant of I, J, K, Rx, Ry, Rz, Fx, Fy, Fz. Notice that the longer I am teaching, the worse my handwriting becomes. But we already know how to solve this, right? We already know that this is Ry. Fz minus Rz Fy in the i direction minus, and I'm just going to write this in, in, in just a matrix form, Rx, Rz, Fx, Fzj plus Rx, Ry, Fx, Fy, Okay, I'm just writing these two terms in matrix terms. It's a little bit faster for me. So this is essentially what my cross product means. But then when I take that cross product and dot it with another vector, we know that that product is the sum of the product of the x, y, and z components respectively. In other words, this dot product is equal to ux times this X component, which is just my matrix, Ry, Rz, Fy, Fz. Remember that dot products are scalars, which means that when you take a dot product of two vectors, you multiply the X components and the I unit vectors cancel out, which means that this is our first term. Our second term, we have the Y components, Uy. And what's the Y component of this moment? It is this matrix. Rx, Rz, Fx, Fz. I'm going to need your help. What would the Z component of this 
uh, or sorry, what would the third component of this dot product be? We know that it's the Z component of my unit vector. And what would the Z component of this cross product be? It would be Rx, Ry, and Fx, Fy. Yeah, Rx, Ry, Fx, Fy. And why am I doing this? Look at this dot product and compare it to this cross product. Notice that in both the cross product and the dot product, we have the same matrices. However, we exchange the unit vectors with, we exchange the unit vectors with the components of a unit vector. So we exchange our i, j, and k with u, x, u, y, u, z. And why am I pointing this out? Because now, Notice that these terms would be the same, except that yeah, i, j, and k are replaced by ux, uy, uz. So what this tells me is that I can calculate the dot product of a cross product. In other words, I can find this scalar triple product by solving a determinant for ux, Uy, Uz in place of my i, j, and k unit vectors, and then my Rx, Ry, Rz, Fx, Fy, Fz. Because notice that if you solve this determinant, you will get Ux times this matrix, Uy times this matrix, Uz times this matrix. So the scalar triple product is essentially a determinant. A determinant where instead of using your i, j, and k vectors, you have your u, x, u, y, and u, z components. And I hope that this is starting to ring some bells for you. Because now you see that when we want to find the moment or the component of a moment along a specified axis, we are essentially just solving one determinant. Now look at everything we did in our example. We found the moment through a determinant, we find the unit vector, and then we take the dot product. We could actually condense these two steps, the cross product and the dot product, into simply one determinant. Now, if you'd like, the book actually contains the same example, but in the solution, it solves it using this method. So I would recommend that you go back to your problem 414 and try to solve it using the scalar triple product and you'll see that you're gonna end with the same answer. So that is the scalar triple product. I'd like to go over an example, but I'm actually running out of time and there are some other uh, topics that I would like to cover today. So before I stop, are there any questions regarding the scalar triple product or just moments in general? Yeah, I do have a question. Why is there, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but why is there not like a minus for the U of Y? For the oh, here we go. There should be because notice that this is a negative sign. So it's U Y times negative this. So good, good observation rate. Isn't the uh, triple scalar or the scalar triple product also called the box product? I think it is. I think it's, I, I need to look, look into that. Because I've only ever heard it called the scalar triple plus. Let me look into that and I'll get back to you. Any final questions regarding moments? Okay, so if there are no questions, let's uh, stop our moment or at least our three-dimensional moment discussion here and let's move on to some other topics.